Genesis does. What Nintendo don't. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. All right. <laughs> Before I lose subscribers and I lose uh, views, on, um, for those two who are actually stuck around to, to my terrible singing and watch this video, thank you for, for checking this video out. Thank you for subscribing and hitting the notifications button. That, that means a lot. Anyway, went to Walmart this morning and I was surprised to see these were still in stock. I was expecting it to be like really hard, like the Nintendo Mini. However, so far anyway, these are pretty readily available. Uh, 80 US dollars is what it retails for. Now, just like the other minis, there are variations, right? There's the, the EU version that's a little bit different, the Mega Drive, there's a Japanese version, and this, right? So it comes with 42 games. Two of the games included are ones uh, Darius, Darius, and, and Tetris. Those are uh, games that were never originally released for the Genesis. Well, the Tetris supposedly, like there's like 10 copies floating around. Uh, kind of a long story with, with the history of Tetris. So I'll dive into that a little bit later. But uh, a lot of set of games. There's two controllers. 42 games is double of what uh, the Super Nintendo Mini had. These minis, there's a lot coming out, right? We have the, the NES Mini, the Super Nintendo Mini, the Commodore 64 Mini, uh, the PlayStation 1 Mini, which was awful uh, and got so. Uh, and, of course, this one. And then there's a TurboGrafx-16 one uh, slash PC Engine one coming out very soon. So there, because of what Nintendo started several years ago with the NES Mini, uh, these are really hot items. And it's right before the holidays. I remember when the Genesis and Nintendo, Super Nintendo were having, say, you know, the Super Nintendo and Genesis were having the 16-bit the wars. It's kind of coming back in some regards to right now, which is crazy, 30 years later. Um, so anyway, I want to dive into the game. Let's show you the box. I love the style. This is just like you'd see in North America with the Genesis uh, in the box back. They show the list of games. Uh, 40 plus a 2 make 42. You got the Sega Seal of Quality. You have Genesis 30, 30th Anniversary. It makes me feel extremely old. Uh, thinking that's crazy. It's been 30 years. Um, and it's in multiple languages. So you got English, Spanish, and French. Let's just open this up, take a closer look, and of course, let's power it on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here is a closer look at the box itself. It's T14. Uh, some of the games on here are, are awesome. I mean, a lot of good lists. I mean, for me... Genesis back in the day were for sports titles, were for uh, shooters, uh, etc. Fighters, the, I think the Super Nintendo back in the day were for RPGs, platformers. I mean, kind of depend on what kind of genre of game you want to play. For me, I had both. I bought the Super Nintendo first, the Genesis I, my neighbor had, and then I bought the Genesis down the road. But anyway, you don't want to hear my life story about the Genesis. You want to hear the review on this. So let's go and dive in. Streets of Rage, of course, Street Fighter 2. They've got some really good licenses, not just first party, but third party with Capcom. Uh, let's see what else we have. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, but no Sonic 3. No, uh, Those are missing, uh, which is unfortunate. Okay, some EA games. You got Road Rash 2. Um, you have Toe Jam and Earl, but there's you don't have the second Toe Jam and Earl, unfortunately, the follow-up to it. Um, but, of course, Echo the Dolphin, Castle Illusion, those are classic. So let's go to open this up. One thing I noticed that I like, there's no sticker, which is nice. You can just open it up. But there is a sticker at the bottom here. But if you want to open, there's just a tab here. That's nice. Don't have to worry about uh, breaking the, the sticker. Let's open this up. You get two full-size controllers. And let's uh, go ahead and open the seal here. Now, let's see how long. Now, if they're full-size, there's three-button controllers, not the six-button controller. But Retro 8-Bit does produce uh, USB six-button controllers that are licensed by Sega. So you can pick those up. I, I believe they're like uh, $15 to $20 or so. And you can go get those, and that's cool. So you can, if you want, you prefer, prefer a six Button controller, that's an option, that's USB, that's officially branded. Feels, uh, from the look of it, feels in, in just like the standard Sega Genesis controller. I got the, the seal there, Sega stamp there, that's awesome. Uh, the cord uh, appears to be plenty long. I know an issue with the original NES uh, Mini was the cords were too, the extension cords were too, too short, at this point where they had extension cables for the extension cord, which is weird, right? But, um, I don't know, it looks like to maybe like a six foot cable, plenty of, plenty of cable there. USB, I'm sure you can use this on, on Raspberry Pis, I'm sure you can use it on your computer, but uh, obviously built for this. does come with two, which is a huge plus. You've got, this is nice, uh, you have the wall adapter. A lot of things like Nintendo, they tend to do this a lot. They don't include the USB wall adapter. I guess they assume that if you have a phone, you already have this. So that is nice, that's an actually nice add-on to that. I'm actually, I like that that they have that. Here is the control, this is like a micro USB. This is for the power to, to turn the thing on. Obviously, from wall connector, that's pretty universal. You got HDMI, which is obviously needed. And here's a box within a box. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. Get the serial number. 
Okay, awesome. So uh, here's this. Now this flap might take the sticker. There's a little plastic covering here. Let's take that off. These, oh, it does actually open up. I'm kind of impressed. It actually flap does open, but there's no board. Now, if it played mini cartridges, that would be killer. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You have your on and off, just like back in the day. Uh, volume looks like it's just for more. Uh, we'll see what that does here in a second. Reset button. Uh, you get the USB connection here. It's pretty lightweight. I'm not quite sure what's running here. I'm not sure if it's a Raspberry Pi or some type of thing like that board. HDMI, here's your micro USB for power. Let's power this thing on and go from there. When you first turn it on, you have to select your language. I'll choose English for the sake of that's the only language I can speak. <laughs> uh, and then you, it loads up pretty quick. So you have the settings automatically uh, set to, to release date. Uh, and uh, you got a nice image of all the box art. Uh, you can't see uh, the back of the box, right? But you can you, know, you can see the front of the box, and you can, you can go settings. This is where you can uh, check kind of the, the credits. Uh, you can change the wallpaper settings, which is unique. So if you have it on a four by three aspect ratio, you can have the, the image behind you. There's there's really technically two to choose from. I wish there was more, but it's all good. Uh, staff credits, in case you're curious on, on who worked on this project. I won't bore you with the details there. Got legal notice. Uh, you can also go to, uh, let's check out a game here. Let's go to Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, game is super hard based on an arcade game by Capcom. One of my favorite ports of this is for the super graphics. Uh, awesome port, almost like a, an arcade quality port. This game is very, very challenging. But loads up pretty quick, and just like a lot of Capcom games back in the day, like Trojan, you'd see the side scroll. I mean, this is an iconic game. Also ported to the Super Nintendo, but the sound to me, the music for the Genesis is so iconic. I love the audio that the, the Genesis puts out. And what happens if you hold Start? It does go to the menu here, and you can either save your progress, your screen. You can go to load a previous save spot. You can do four for each game. You can also return to menu, which we'll do here. It takes a couple seconds, and it boots back up. Next game, I'll show you iconic Sonic. The Hedgehog, who became the mascot for Sega, and still really is a mascot for Sega. I remember the first time I saw Sonic the Hedgehog playing at my friend's house, I was like mind blown to how fast he was, and the graphics, and the music, and the gameplay. So iconic. I love this game. I do want to mention, too, that this is technically not the first uh, Sega Genesis quote mini that's come out. At Games, for years, has been releasing these plug-and-play Genesis systems where actually can use uh, cartridges, which is kind of unique. Uh, they're not compatible with every game in the library, but... Uh, they've gotten not great reviews with emulation and all that good stuff, but it's it's interesting. This is not the first one, but this is uh, definitely a Sega licensed product and released by Sega. So Sonic Classic, if you haven't played this game, uh, shame on you. I'm just joking, but definitely check it out because this is uh, definitely one to check out. I think between this one, my favorite Sonic game, I'll be honest, is Sonic CD. And that's one thing I wish that was on this collection was more the the S Sega CD games. Maybe they'll have a Sega CD mini down the road. Uh, but I wish there's so many. There's a handful of Sega CD games that were only available like Sonic CD that would have been really fun to include on here. And you can also include 32X as well, like uh, Star Wars Arcade, etc. Um, there's no um, sports titles on this system, unfortunately. So you don't have like the Madden, you don't have uh, you know the NBA Jam. I think a lot of that's because they had uh, licenses for the sports teams. You can change the order of the games. Top right corner, right now it's under number of players. You can do alphabetical, which I actually prefer. Here's Darius. This is a game that's an arcade port. I don't know quite the whole story about this, but it wasn't uh, released on the Genesis or Mega Drive, to my understanding. And then uh, this is what it looks like by uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So you can go back to settings and change it. It basically stretches the screen out to fit the whole screen. I prefer 4x3 four by, four by because that's kind of how it was back on the CRTs. And I just feel like playing it like this... Uh, it feels a little stretched. Some people prefer it. I think it feels a little stretched. But this game is awesome. This is like an R-Type type game. If you played R-Type and uh, the music, really killer music. And there, there's bombs, uh, there's missiles, there's upgrades, like a lot of shooters. And this is definitely one to check out. I'm glad that's included in this bundle here uh, on the Genesis Mini. We'll pause it. We'll hold it down. We'll go back to, to the menu. Now, one area I was really confused. I was trying to add scan lines. It took me forever. It's not in the instruction manual, believe it or not. But here you have to hit C when you're on this setting, and it will add a CRT filter. So it's more than just scan lines. I'll show you what it means in a second. So we'll check out Tetris. Tetris is a complicated story. Uh, Tetris basically was Atari had the rights to the arcade. 
uh, Nintendo had the rights to the home console, and then there was back and forth. So only supposedly only ten copies of the Mega Drive Tetris were released, uh, but this is it. Um, this is the CRT version. Uh, you can see the tiny scan lines, but it adds a weird glow to the image as well, which I guess is supposed to emulate the scan line. This is a terrible. These are the worst uh, <laughs> uh, pieces I'm getting. I mean, what am I supposed to do with these? This is awful. Uh, anyway, uh, long story. But yeah, so long story short. It would basically never came out for certainly the Genesis and only very, very limited for the Mega Drive. Uh, cool to see it on here. It doesn't handle as well. I'm used to the NES port, which handles really good. This a little clunky to me, to be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of this port for the Genesis. Uh, even, uh, I guess, the, the Tengen that touches for the NES handles better than this, in my opinion. So cool that it's on here, and I think it's a cool piece of story, but uh, definitely not my favorite port uh, of Tetris. And, and certainly I think it could have handled better, uh, to be quite honest. We'll go and exit. You can, you can see I save it. There you go. I save my spot so I can continue later. That's nice. Benefit of emulation, I guess. You can save different states. We'll go back. Show you another game. Let's check out Street Fighter 2. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ports. I know it was ported to, the, obviously, the Super Nintendo as well. Even the Game Boy and other platforms. Now, keep in mind, this because we have it comes with the three-button Genesis controller, you have to hit start to change between kick and punch. So playing it with a three-button controller is definitely not ideal, and it, you know you definitely want to get a six-button controller for this, especially for like Eternal Champions as well and other games. As I mentioned before, uh, Retrobit they do have a 16-bit USB official license Sega Genesis controller you can purchase for this, which is cool. And this is def that's definitely the controller you want to use for this. But I, I do love this port, and I, I do wish that Mortal Kombat was also in this bundle. That's really disappointing that it's not. I, I definitely loved Mortal Kombat for the Genesis, opposed Super Nintendo. Nintendo had filtered it, didn't have the blood back in the day. You got the blood on the Genesis. Um, so there's games missing in this library, even though I'd give this probably a rating of like maybe a B plus to A as far as game selection. There are games missing, like like I mentioned multiple times. Sonic 3, um, you know, Aladdin. Uh, that would have been awesome to add. You know, there's a lot of, I guess it's hard to include them all. Uh, but, uh, you know, either way, I think the selection here is great. I haven't played all these games, I'm, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, some of these games I'm not familiar with. The Strider is awesome. Earthworm Jim. No Earthworm Gym 2. Rise from the Dead. Altered Beast. That is definitely a classic. Anyway, now on to my final conclusion. So in conclusion, what I think about the new Sega Genesis Mini. I like it. There's a lot of things to be positive about it. The game selections are great. Uh, I'm kind of curious why there's no Sonic 3. I'd love to see Golden X 3 as well. That was only available through the Sega channel in North America. It'd be really, really cool to have... Golden Axe 3 on here. Golden Axe 1 is on here, but not 3. Uh, so that would have been really cool. Uh, Factors Tetris and uh, Darius are, are on here as well. That's cool because those games weren't readily available uh, when this game system was out, obviously. I'm a big fan of Genesis. I think overall the game system is great. Uh, some other games I would have loved to see in this collection would have been like the Disney games. I mean, of course, they have Castle Illusion and some uh, make another Worlds of Illusion. But I'd love to see Aladdin. Aladdin is like one of my favorite Genesis games on the, the platform. And I don't care what people say, but the, the Genesis port of Aladdin is 20 times, 100 times better than the Aladdin port for the Super Nintendo. Completely different game. That's like playing the, the movie. It was an amazing game. I wish that was on here. Uh, Lion King was also very good. Um, there's just so many good games. I guess you can't really include them all. It'd been really cool to have like a spot on here uh, where you can load ROMs and, and play other games maybe that you could purchase through Genesis, right? Or Sega, rather. Uh, I know that, that they're probably worried about piracy and et cetera. However, uh, the Commodore 64 Mini does that. They have an area where you can actually put ROMs and play that. That's pretty sweet. It's definitely better than the PlayStation 1 Mini. That thing was terrible. Uh, it was actually terrible. So definitely better than that, which I'm not saying much. Is it as good as the original NES Mini? Mm, probably not, because I just love the NES. Uh, and it's the first that came out in the Minis. Uh, but it is better, in my opinion, than the Super Nintendo Mini, just because it has a lot more game selection, to be honest. I, I think that's a that's a positive. Uh, some things I don't really care about the, the, the Mini. It took me a while to figure out how to find uh, the filters. I don't care for uh, the CRT filter. It's too bright, uh, as I mentioned before. I'm just not a big fan of that. I just prefer no scans lines at all. The things I didn't really care for it were uh, the menu screen, I think, Going around, navigation of the games are great. Definitely uh, far better than the PlayStation 1 Mini, right? But uh, as far as uh, changing the filters, changing your screen size, you can't do that from the game itself. You can't just push pause. It's not in that sub-menu. You have to actually exit, back, exit the game, 
and then go to the settings in the very top left and then select it that way. And it took me a while to figure out how to add the scan lines or CRT filter. Uh, that was kind of annoying. Literally, I was stuck on it for like 10 minutes trying to figure out. There's no instruction on here how to do it. So that's negative. Now, you can go on the website. Uh, I believe it's Gen I believe it's genesismini.com. And you can actually download the instruction manuals for each game in case you guys don't know how to play a certain game. Uh, but those aren't included here. Uh, I love... Um, I also, just to point out, uh, the reset button does take you to the submenu. It doesn't reset the game itself. It just takes you, exit you out of the game. Uh, this volume control doesn't do anything. It's more for aesthetics. And these flaps here, you can't play cartridges. In fact, in the manual, it says it does not play just as cartridges. Duh. I mean, the game cart is half the size of the mini itself. Now, bottom line, is this worth picking up? I, I believe so. I mean, I'm obviously uh, grew up in the generation where the Genesis was, was huge. Now, if you didn't grow up in the Genesis the generation, there's still a lot of great games on here. Now, can you buy a Raspberry Pi and can you purchase, can you put a whole bunch of games on there for far less? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie to you. However, I believe if you, if you like a product, you should support a product or game, right? So, but for me, even though I own every game on here physically, right, I have, I have a, a cartridge for every game on here except for uh, Darius, but I even have a, a Tetris of a multi-cart a Mega Drive game that has Tetris on it even. So um, I have every game on here pretty much. Um, so, you know, the only reason I really wanted to buy this is because of A, nostalgia. I wanted to review it for you guys, and I will be playing this. I think the selection of games is convenient. Um, I do wish there was an area, and this is true with all the minions, where you can actually purchase more games down the road. Like, I wish there was some hardware, like a, uh, like a storage on here where you can actually purchase more games. But uh, you could per probably purchase a Raspberry Pi and put all the Justice the games on there. But people frown upon that, of course. Uh, but overall, it is worth picking up. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Appreciate you guys subscribing. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.